You're welcome back to the breakfast on Plus TV Africa. We're talking about a conversation that began, you know, on Monday, really. The NLC declared a five-day warning strike in Kaduna State over the sack of about 7,000 workers from the state civil service and other parts of the state. You know, they began to protest and it was just a lot because we saw pictures of, you know, what looked like thugs attacking that NLC protest in Kaduna State. We spoke to um, NLC President Ayuba Waba here on the show yesterday and other labor leaders as well. And the, the, the headlines we're seeing today is that NLC has called off the strike saying they want to negotiate with the federal government on the way forward. And uh, to speak more on this, we've invited a risk and policy management expert, Mr. Oshino Ibrahim. Good morning. Thanks for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Good morning, Nigerians, and good morning, viewers. Good Thank morning. So after what seemed like it was going to be a stalemate, you know, brickmanship, Labour saying this protest will run its full course for the next five days. The Kaduna State government standing its ground to say we're not shifting grounds. You know, these workers have been sacked and nothing will be done about it. We see that uh, Waba announced that the NLC suspended the strike immediately to give dialogue a chance. Did you expect that this would happen so soon? Uh, um, I will start by commending uh, the federal government of Nigeria. Uh, um, for standing up um, to save the ordinary um, citizens and the Cardinites, and especially the Nigerian workers there. Um, I believe what's happened is just, you know, a test for a true leadership. Um, Baba has been a very uh, dogged, responsive, um, gentle giant over the years. I've known him at least in the last 20 years. Um, Governor, uh, Governor Nasuru also believes that um, um, a lot of things need to be corrected in the state civil service. I remember uh, in 2007, when we are clamoring of unlawful political recruitment into civil service, I'm taking it from the handbook of Governor Rufai, where a governor or a political um, personnel person believes that for me to bring um, on, 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 on needed civil service into the system or civil service into the system will make me to win an election and the rest of them. But forgetting that the liability of payment and salary and emolument will be shouldered on, on, on the state governor. You can imagine Cardinal State, local government system and the primary healthcare sector, including superb, having nothing less than over 27,000 workers and some of them are living in Abuja, some are living in Lagos, some are living in Kano. Some of them are not even coming to work at all. You can imagine that. And the state government, out of the revenue, a very small and minor revenue they are collecting, they are paying for recurrent expenditure. They are paying almost 70% on salaries. So, and this is not about Kaduna State alone. No. A lot of states who are afraid to take that bold step to tell them that, look, I don't need your service, and this has to give way for this. You can imagine a cardinal state, a very big state, for instance, spending almost its revenue, 80% 80, 80 of the revenue, on the current on civil servants. You can imagine that. What about the other ordinary Nigerians, who you and I, who are not a civil servant, who are not um, into public service, who needs light, who needs road, who needs good medical care, who needs other social amenities that are not benefiting from the resources of the state? Okay, well, um, when, it, when it is... Um... Yeah, they are not benefiting from the resources of the state. So I believe what happened is as a result of the restructuring that we are clamoring for. The power at the center is too much. The state should be able to harness its resources so that they can get more revenue and take care of their liability and expenditure. Right, I Ms. believe Ms. what Oshinawa. is happening between NC and Cardinal State Government is a very pure lack of communication, you know, if you are quoting the federal law, section 2 or section 20 of the labor law, Cardinal State will tell you that they have their domestic law and they have the right to make their laws to unnest or to channel their operation in Cardinal State. So that's why I'm appreciating Dr. Chris Singigate for bringing the two parties to the table so that peace give way. All right, Mr. Ashinawa, this is so that's what um, I see from our in conversations that. yesterday. Uh, with uh, Ayuba Waba, 
Um, you know, there has been people who have mentioned ghost workers. And, you know, like you've also mentioned here, there's people who are benefiting from the state funds without actually being in, in the state service or being at work. Um, but is it a failure of the Cardona state government uh, to uh, clearly show or prove that these are ghost workers? Uh, the uh, uh, Labour um, uh, president also mentioned that there was no conversation between the government and Labour before these steps were taken. Um, and so it, it feels like it is just a cutting down of numbers because the, the state cannot pay, which is unfair. I think we've lost him there. You know, and, and that's where you know, I feel like there's, there's you know, some misunderstanding here. If you say you know, we're sacking 7,000 you know, people without actually being able to show that these were ghost workers, um, then it leaves room for questioning. And then if you say, oh, well, you know, we suddenly cannot pay this number of people and so we're going to fire you know, 7,000 or 4,000 or 5,000 workers, it still sounds very unfair. Because so we need it's to not, know what it is, what the yeah, excuse it's is. It's not the workers' fault that you can't pay them. You know, if they are in part, you know, part of the, the, the state's workforce, um, they are meant to be paid. They but Ayub Bawaba given... even argued otherwise yesterday, outlining just how much the state makes in internally generated uh, revenue. Exactly. How much they get when it comes to federal allocations every month. So he argued, you know, with figures that the state does have the funds to pay their salaries. Well, the state, you know, might also have their own counter argument and say, you know, that's not true. Um, but... You know, in, in the lack of, you know, clarity, in the lack of an actual conversation, in the lack of these meetings, and I, I think that's one of the challenges that they had, there was no correspondence between both sides before, you know, those steps were taken. If you fire 5,000 people because, well, you can't afford to pay them, what do you expect those 5,000 people to do? And isn't it a failure on your part that you can't pay your workers? Is it, isn't it a failure on the part of the Cardona State government that they've not been able to generate enough internally generated revenue, including support from the federal government and government allocation, to pay uh, workers? So, you know, how fair, you know, would the government see it? And, you know, for people who say, oh, you know, sometimes you need to make, you know, take certain steps and, and you know, damn the consequences and just go because that's what a true leader does. No. Um, you don't fire 5,000 people in a country where we still have one of the highest levels of unemployment in, 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 in the About world. About 23 million unemployed. How many of these 5,000 people are going to decide, well, I think I'm going to go into kidnapping? Look at what Kaduna is dealing with, you know, security-wise. Mm -hmm. How many of these 5,000 people or 4,000 people who have been fired will maybe go into crime? And so there has to be a balance somehow, some way. And, you know, being a brute, you know, leader is, is not the answer. Uh, welcome back, Mr. Oshinawa. There is um, obviously some delay with the uh, connection here, but we'll see how we can manage through. Um, what I'm, I was asking is, um, should the government have been able to prove that the reason it sacked these 4,000 or 5,000 workers was genuinely because they were ghost workers? Or is it fair enough that they simply just sack because, well, we can't afford to pay this many people anymore? I, I, I will answer that question in two ways. I, I've been a special advisor in an agency of the government, and I know what is ghost worker. I also know that um, politicians will load the civil service schedule of employment with proxy names for people who are not um, into the service, so that they can get some, you know, some um, some some stipend at the end of the month. Secondly, um. The Cardinal State government right now has been bleeding. The financial strength of the state has gone so low based on the dangling of you know, the national resources or the share that comes to Cardinal State in terms of the revenue, the jack, the fact, everywhere there is economic crisis. Probably River State and Lagos State are the ones surviving, maybe because of their prudency in financial management and probably on taxes. But it is a known fact that most of the states are suffering. They don't have the financial strength to take care of this high number of you know, civil servants in their respective state. Also, if you can do a simple investigation, invest, uh, investigative journalism, you find out that most 
of civil servants who are on the schedule of, of most of the state governments, some of them are prosing. Some of them are not even working. They are not in Cardinal State. So you won't blame the governor for fishing out these guys. If they are 30,000, they have to leave because they are not working and they are earning salary and the liability is on the shoulder of the government. So what I expect the labor and the, uh, Mr. Nosiro every fight to do is to come to the table. It's not about, you know, who wins, I'm the governor. Leader does not use force. You use dialogue to show your strength. That is what I expect from the governor. Does, does the it governor seem... is not a minister anymore. He's not a DJ of Boru again. He's a governor. He's yeah. an experienced governor. He's a two-time governor. So I expect him to sit down with the national leadership of the neighbor and fine-tune other areas. If you have asked 20,000 or 7,000 to go, or whichever number, you have to pay them. If you can't pay them at once, you have to negotiate with them. I will pay social so time. I will pay this one. I will pay this time. I will pay this time. So these are the things that he needs to do. But if you say but if you say that these support, persons hold on, Mr. Oshinawa, you know if you say that these persons have been cannot remove a prosy staff. If you say that these persons have been um, on the wage bill of the Kaduna State Government without actually working and they're ghost workers, then why do they need to be paid off? Um, you know, now that they are fired. It it, it doesn't there, there needs to be some balance here. If you say that they've not you know, been, they've been on the way to build just, you know, surviving, not working. You know, politicians have put some of all those names there, you know, to, to gain money from the, from the Cardinal State government. Then why is there a conversation about paying them off, you know, when they are fired? Because they are not legitimate staff in the first place. Look, let me state this very clearly. You cannot use illegitimacy to earn legitimacy. You cannot enter into the civil service. There is a number of time that you have to come to work in civil service. Let's assume you are engaged during the Governor Yakoa, when the late Governor Yakoa was in service. And for five, eight years, you didn't show up in the office and you are earning the state revenue. And the governor or the government noticed that you have not been around and you are asked to go. You are not expecting the governor to pay you instantly. Don't forget that the state will pay the pensioner. They have the backlog of pensioners that they have to pay. They have the current working civil service staff that they have to pay. So these are the immediate need for the governor. The governor will take his priority that who am I supposed to pay? Is it you that you have been handing the state resources for eight years or five years that you've not been coming to work? Am I going to pay you all that? But all these things are what they call, you know, table discussion. You have to bring the labor. The labor, let them understand that these are the things that we need to do. The existing workers, they need to be taken care of. The lawful pensioner who has retired from the state civil service or so needs to be well taken care of. So if all these proxy workers, we are fishing them out, you are not expecting me to pay them right now. I am going to pay them at so, 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 so time at this trend and batches. So that is allowed. All right. So, Mr. Oshinawa Ibrahim, are these some of the... So the governor is right by telling them that I am not going to pay people who have not been coming to work for five years or for two, three years. Hmm. So I will continue to pay. If you look at the Cardinal, they have not been holding salary. I think the governor is doing well on that. So labor must also understand that there is, we are in a trying time in this country. You understand? So it needs to, labor needs to know that. So when they get to the table in Abuja today, hopefully we will see what is going to happen. But I'm sure that, you know, wisdom will prevail. Okay, Mr. Oshinawa, really, th that, that meeting is scheduled to hold at 11 a.m. today. What do you think are some of the, you know, decisions that they're likely to reach that you feel this would be a middle ground because we've seen situations where you know there's a strike they have dialogue but they fail to reach a, a you know a decision and then they go back striking again um what i can see is that the labor has shown maturity and i am calling on governor um not zero every five, uh, a big man in a small body.
to please also to shift can. He should not declare the labor leader wanted. Of course, I recognize that the state has their own laws, that any other person must comply with the law. The labor leader is not immune from prosecution. So, but I appreciate what labor has done last night. They respect the federal government, they call off the strike temporarily. So I expect the Kaduna State um, um, representative in Abuja today to also shift their base to let reason prevail, to let, let labor knows that they are strangled, financially strangled. They are they are um they they, they are they are they, they need finances to take care of their demand and other priorities and other investments is there for them to develop. So if you look at Kaduna State today, the governor has done fantastically well in terms of prudency management. At a time, he reduced some salary of the of their government functionaries. He also that I know, I know him very well. He's not living lavishly. He's not a governor that lives extravagantly. He's a prudent man. So if it were to be other governors who just live lavishly, I will state it very clearly here. You understand? So these are the things that I see. Um, that I expect the, the labor leader, both of them should have reasons to, to, to come to the table and hire on that, whatever. So I see them moving forward. I'm not sure, uh, and I see labor also, that the strike will not continue because right. ordinary cardinal citizens are suffering. Investment there has been shut down. Airport has been shut down. Um, power has been shut down. Other major facilities. Most of those issues are not working. So well, these are the things that I see that... Um, uh, for the seed that will make them to rethink so that everybody can be on the table and all the sack workers too can be compensated in one way or the other. So well, I call on government, uh, not serial refined, to please to humongously reverse some of the decision by sacking the nurses, by sacking some, um, some staff who are joining the labor. is he, the father of the state. He should please. And please rethink and let uh, wisdom prevail. But but isn't um, well, well? First of all, uh, I don't know if we you know we would like to celebrate, you know, a government official for not living lavishly. Um, they're not expected to live lavishly in the first place. They're servants of the people, and so I don't you know know if we should be celebrating that. You know, but and then second, um, the sacking of the nurses and lecturers, um, isn't that a you know almost a, a, a signal to show? The, you know, way that the sacking of those 4,000 or 5,000 people, the decision was taken without actually knowing whether these persons were coming to work or whether they were ghost workers or not. The, the speed at which that decision was taken, doesn't that in any way or does that show you or tell the same way those 4,000 people were sacked in, in the first place? Without actually looking deeply into whether these people, like you've described, you know, come to work once in four years. If you say that, if you say that, you will not be fair to the government. Um, I'm going to go into into few policy. There is in, in risk management, there is what we call, you know, stress testing. The state government right now is stress testing. They know their posts. They know their processes of recruiting and disengagement. You will, let me call your attention that Governor Rufai, I'm not a spokesperson and I'm not intending to be. Uh, I know that he wants to, when he wants to elect, um, um, do a primary of a local government chairman, he asks some of the contestants to come and write a test so that anybody that he is putting as a chairman or he is being elected as a chairman, let me use that word, will be a competent a financial manager, and somebody who can weigh the risk of anything he wants to do. So I'm not seeing Governor Rufai to just sack a civil servant with a higher level of level 10 or level 8 upward on a fiat, on a stable. There is a process. The head of service must be involved. They must um, do proper due diligence concerning this Cardinal State Civil Service Law. So I'm not seeing Governor Rufai doing what you just said. I'm sure he must have gone through all the due process to disengage all these guys. And if you look at the uh, presentation of his uh, head of service, the woman, she made some 
very um, courteous and a decent um, uh, um, um, reasons why they are sacked and the process at which they are ejected out of the system. So we need to give them fear, fear hearing. They have the process. They cannot just sack. Seems, uh, above level eight, they have to go to the process. Hmm. But the first thing remain that he will he will employ can disengage. Even the federal government, when the, when the 2015 came here, for instance, dictate more than 10,000 from the federal civil service, prosy civil servant. So, these are general routine in government. When you notice that you cannot handle the liability or the wage bill, you can ask some surplus or excess staff to go. It happens in private sector. It happens in private businesses as well. So these are the things. And I also call on other state governments who are using 90% of their monthly allocation to pay salary. It is not tenable anymore. That is why people like us are clamoring for constitutional review. Hmm. This constitution that we are using is a process. It's a product of military error. Seven months sitting down in a Supreme Military Council and drafting one document, it is not tenable again. The state government should be able to annex its resources and pay royalty into the federal government first, so that they can have resources to engage, to pay other expenses and liability on their state. Most of the states, like Ekiti, like Oshu State, like Eboi, are handicapped. Gombe State, they don't have money. All right, Mr. Ibrahim, if you can hear me. So... Mr. Ibrahim, I want to ask you lastly, um, Mr. Ibrahim, this is just one of, Mr. Ibrahim, can you hear me? All right, if you can hear me, I'm, this is just one of the many protests that we've seen in the past few years, re, you know, regarding labor, you know, that the Judiciary Staff Union, you know, workers striking, doctors striking here and there. What lessons really can we say we have learned from all these strikes and the demands that Nigerian workers are placing on the government? You mean the lesson from the, is it from the state government or from the NLC? On, or which on both government? parties, on if both parties. If you are going parties. to look at both sides, both sides have learned few lessons. They've learned few lessons and they will continue to learn. Like the governor, I was not happy with the governor looking, declaring the NLC uh, labor leader. Uh, wanted. He has never committed any crime. He is a lawful Nigerian and uh, also he is representing what he's doing is constitutionally right, but the governor also has the right to protect the state because if the protest is hijacked and some of the state properties or investment are damaged, it will cost the governor a lot more to do it. So it's, um, it's a welcome development that they are going to meet today so that, you know, we can, we can move forward. There's okay. a tension in the land already. If you look at everywhere from the east, south, west, north, name it, there's tension. So we don't want more tension, especially in Cardinal State, for, for a governor who is doing very well. We don't want any issue with him. So right. I think uh, it's a win-win for both of them. I will, I will use that word. All right. Um, Ibrahim Oshinawa, thank you very much for joining us and for your time this morning. Thank you. Apologies for the slight delay in feedback there, but thanks for that conversation. Uh, of course, uh, from 11 o'clock when the meeting does take place, we will bring you further uh, updates on the Labour, Kaduna State Government and the Minister of Labour um, engagement. Stay with us, so we'll go on a short break. When we come back, would yes. you uh, be sent to jail for 15 years if you pay ransom to kidnappers in Nigeria? That's a new bill that has been brought forward at the National Assembly. And we'll talk about it after this break.